Good evening, everybody, uh, and welcome to tonight's regularly scheduled meeting in the Waterloo City Council, <coughs> July 1st. Can you believe that it's already six months to Christmas? No. Crying out loud. Uh, but anyway, welcome. We have a really good crowd in, in uh, chambers tonight. That's always uh, uh, comforting to see that folks care enough about our topics that they come out and participate. And also to those of you that are watching on our public access television, we appreciate your attendance also. Mayor Clerk, could you, or Madam Clerk, could you start with the roll, please? getting these promotions. Uh, Ms. Cole? Here. Mr. Getty? Here. Mr. Jones? Here. Mr. Greenwood? Here. Mr. Schmidt? Here. Mr. Welfer? Here. Mr. Hart? Here. Very good. Uh, if y'all would please join me in standing for just a moment of silent reflection or prayer. Thank you very much. Our pledge tonight is going to be led by Mr. Mark Rice, our Public Works Director. Mr. Rice, please. Please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hart. I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, the agenda as proposed. And also with the approval of the <coughs> agenda, I move that we approve the minutes of June 24th. Second. Council, do you have any questions or concerns regarding the agenda or the minutes? No, sir. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, I move that we receive, place on file, and approve the consent agenda, items 1A through B8. Also, with the approval of the consent agenda, I move that we pay our bills, which will be read by our finance chair. The bills this week are $1,696,747.51. Second. Council, do you have any questions regarding the consent agenda? <coughs> uh, Madam Clerk, please. It's a roll call vote. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Getty? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hurt? Yes. Very good. Thank you. Uh, just need to mention that we have a new appointee to our airport commission. I don't see Chris here tonight, but Chris Harshberger has uh, joined us on the airport commission. And Chris is a longtime uh, acquaintance of the city and a, a big supporter and was the primary driver of our uh, fabulous air show that we had just two summers ago. So Chris is now a member of our airport commission and we want to welcome him on board for that. We also have, I believe it's a new employee, Joseph Schaefer, to the position of sewer maintenance worker effective uh, next Monday. So uh, welcome and thank you to both of those people. Uh, item number two, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Schmidt. Item number two is a motion to reopen the hearing and that's for the request by Residential Development Partners, LLC, for a site plan amendment to the R1 RP Plan 1 and two-family resident district to allow for the construction of 12 single-family homes on 3.19 acres, generally located north of Eureka Street and east of Vermont Street, also known as Baltimore Field. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries, and the uh, hearing is, is reopened. <coughs> Madam Clerk, uh, do you have any objections on file to this Excuse item? Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. I can't hear you guys. Okay, I'll try to speak up, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. You bet. Uh, Madam Clerk, do you have anybody, any objections on file? I do not. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak either for or against item number two on tonight's agenda? A second time. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to close the hearing and receive the uh, recommendation of approval of Planning, Programming, and Zoning Commission. Second. Very good. Council, do you have any comments or concerns regarding this item? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hart. I have a question. Um, I, the, uh, the original agreement, um, Baltimore Field, and actually this uh, Williston Field, um, these were the proposals in the original development agreement that we made a while ago to, was this the original agreement, or was the original agreement to the entire LLC, or was it specifically to one person? Noel Anderson, Community Planning and Development Director. The development agreement is with Residential Development Partners, LLC. Um, 
it's, we're not changing anything in the development agreement. The LLC is staying the same. Um, I know that uh, the LLC has internally made a, a division of duties um, for different, different sites. Um, and these are the two that Jim Ellis is responsible for. Um, in speaking with the attorney's office, we do not have any concerns with the terms of the development agreement because the LLC is staying the same. Okay. Um, just another quick question. Um, within that, so if I think we at the I think we said something last week that if one person doesn't finish it, the other person will. Or how how does that arrangement work? And Mr. Ellis is here too. He maybe explain this a little bit more. But I mean internally. You know, regardless of how they have it set up internally, they still have to meet the provisions of the development agreement, which requires so many houses being built per year on these sites. Um, so if one of them were not to perform and the other were to take that over, or even if they didn't have it set up that way, they'll still have to meet the terms of our development agreement and build so many houses per year, or the land would come back to us. So regardless of, as long as they meet what they indicate, there's no, how can I say this? Um, the responsibility ultimately lies within the LLC, not the individual. That's correct. Okay. And then do we have a time frame placed around any of these things? I think, did we give seven years or how long did we? There was, to and, and these site? are the actual, the zoning actions, so I don't have the development agreement with me right now, um, but there was a time frame to build so many houses per year um, to fill out a certain number of the lots. Okay. No, if I could ask too, <coughs> Mr. Allison, Mr. Ruff had, given several presentations at like the West Central Neighborhood Association meeting, I know. So the, the type of home, the quality of home, none of that changes. That all remains the same, correct? That's correct. And that's actually the two actions you're taking tonight under number two and number three is the RP, which is the Plan Residence District. So that specifically ties them to the housing styles shown in your council letters there, which we presented to the Planning Commission. And those met the goals and the, the drawings that you saw in the development agreement as well in terms of the type of housing. Um, the style of housing, inclusion of garages, layout of lots, et cetera. Thank you. Good questions. Anybody else? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Graham, a motion to receive, file, consider, and pass for the first time an ordinance amending ordinance number 5079 as amended. City of Waterloo zoning ordinance by amending the official zoning map referred to in section 10.4-4 approving a site plan amendment on certain property. Second. Madam Clerk, it's a roll call vote. Mr. Getty? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Wilper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. <coughs> it's a roll call vote, Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Wilper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Getty? Yes. Very good. That motion carries. Let's. Uh, just for the sake of y'all that are standing back there, if that, that accordion door will open and there's seats, I hate to see you stand back there when there's seats right behind that. So uh, Mark, maybe you could push that open and uh, get them some seats back there. Just turn them around and uh, make yourself comfortable. Thank well, you. That's with the phones. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion and to consider and pass for the second and third times and adopt the ordinance. Second. Mr. Greenwood? Mr. Greenwood? Yes, please. Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Getty? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. <coughs> Item number three, please. Mr. Mayor? Mr. Getty? Request by Residential Development Partners, LLC, Jim Ellis, for a site plan amendment to the R1 RP Plan 1 and two family resident district to allow, allow for the construction of five single family homes on the 1.13 acres generally located by Williston Avenue, Pleasant Street, West 7th Street, and Allen Street, Willis, in other words, Williston Field. Very good. The motion was to open the hearing. <coughs> to reopen the hearing. Very good. Second. Very good. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, and the hearing is now reopened. Madam Clerk, do we have any written objections on file to item number three? There were none. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak either for or against item number three on tonight's agenda? A second. Uh, yes, ma'am. Please state your name and your address, if you would, and give us three minutes. My name is Cheryl Peters Ramelsburg. I have an AKA of Cheryl Ramelsburg. Okay. And um, this is predominantly in my area 
and I want to make sure of the people that move in there. You know, I've got very nice neighbors and I've got drug dealing neighbors. So, I, you know, I hope you have a process for applications where you can be sure that good people are moving into there. Mm -hmm. Cheryl, thank you for your concern, and, and it's shared by all of us uh, in the city, on the council, and what we're doing tonight is establishing some criteria to make sure that, and it, by the way, they're not going to be rental units. They are houses. They're single-family homes for sale, so uh, we want to make sure that they are uh, compatible with the neighborhood and that they're good quality uh, houses. Uh, we can't control who buys them, but we think if we control how they're built, that we'll get good home ownership in those. So we share your concern. Meth labs exist in good houses. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Cheryl. Is there anyone else who would like to speak for or against? Can, when does council speak, Mayor? Uh, just let me make the next okay. motion and I'll do it. Okay. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I make a, a motion to close the hearing and receive and file oral comments and recommendations of approval of planning, programming, and zoning commission. Second. Very good. Council, uh, comments or questions? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Welper. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I've, I've tried to stay uh, pretty neutral on this simply because of the fact that this Wilson Field is in my backyard. Uh, I have not heard very much from, uh, from the neighbors in regarding to this. Um, I have heard that uh, people are uh, not in support of this, but uh, they're not going to oppose it. Uh, they really feel that losing this green space is a is a big mistake, and I can understand what where, you know where they're coming from. Um, but I would like to ask Jim if I could: uh, Are all five of these properties going to be sold? <coughs> are all five of these properties going to be sold prior to being built? Uh, are all five homes going to be built at the same time? Uh, is it possible that maybe only one house gets built and four houses don't get built? What, what's the plan in regards to that? Uh, my name is Jim Ellis, uh, 126 Haynes Avenue, Waterloo, Iowa. Um, basically, the plan is that, that it's being platted as one piece, so there's five lots that are available to start. Um, Basically, they could be, they're all pre-sold uh, okay. houses, so they're not spec houses to, that they would actually be sold after the fact. So they're all pre-sold. We're working with a realtor, uh, Ron Garris Realty, and they use their networking ability to go out and, and obtain the buyers or find the buyers first. Um, and then we sit down, once the buyers have been identified, we actually sit down around the table with the home builder, myself, uh, the realtor, uh, the buyer, and also a banking institution. And we get them pre-qualified for the amount of the house construction. So they go into this um, knowing that they're the, the um, pre-sold. They go into this already being pre-approved for the, for the cost of the house. Um, really, it, it does depend upon the market as far as how quickly they go one, two, three, four, and five in that section, as does each property that we have around town. Um, but we're, we're confident that within Williston Field, within one to two years, we could have all five of them built. Uh, and we would finish out that Williston Field property within a two-year time period. I'm trying to avoid a situation where you, could, where you only get one house built. Mm -hmm. <coughs> That's all that happens. Sure, sure. Uh, don't want this to happen. Right, and that's not what, yeah, that's not what we want to have happen either. There is, <laughs> we, we did go through the process of, there was some time period that we took to actually uh, expand, and we worked with the planning and zoning office to expand the enterprise zone. Uh, that has been accomplished. It was approved at the state um, probably two weeks ago. So the enterprise zone is officially expanded. Once we turn in that paperwork to the, to the uh, Department of Economic Development, um, before there, there are some benefits to the developer for being in the enterprise zone. Before we can receive those benefits, you have to complete the entire project. Okay. 
and these are built as five homes. So the longer that they set out there, the worse it is for the developer too. Okay. So we want them to, to move right along and, and we're confident we, that we can do that. In fact, um, Ron Garris, you know, Leela Granger, who works with Ron, contacts me about every other week, you know, do, are we ready to go, are we ready to go? Um, she's, she says that we have two or three pending right now and we haven't been able to start the discussions because there's some paperwork that needs to happen with the Department of Economic Development. So okay, I'm hoping that's the case. As soon as we get the go ahead, we'll have two or three ready to go. Okay. Uh, one final question. Mm -hmm. uh, the information reads that all five homes will face West 7th. That's correct. Okay. Yep. On Williston, all the houses face Williston. Would the house on the Williston end still face 7th, or do you intend to face Williston with that house? You know, that's a, that's a good question. Um, the intent was not to face any towards Allen Street. Um, if it's a corner lot like that, there is some possibility it could, you know, face, that, that would be the wider dimension in the, in the lot. So m that may be something I need to talk to Noel about, whether we need to modify that a little bit. Our intention was that they would all face 7th, uh, but if, if someone comes in and wants to change that, I don't know, Noel, if, if that would be a minor change or how would that be considered? I have a question. Uh, just just, just let, let's, let's one at a time, Cheryl. Okay. Real quick, yeah, I mean, we could come back and do that as a minor change to the RP if, if it appeared that the, uh, the lot on uh, 7th and Williston would work better to face Williston. Um, the way it was recommended was to have them all face 7th. When you face a house in a corner lot to the longer dimension, um, it actually increases setback, so it makes it a little bit harder to lay out on a corner lot. So we, we, we can definitely look at that when we get to that one, and the council would have the ability to switch that to face Williston if they so, so choose. I might mention, too, that the, the dimension, if I remember correctly, they're about 130 feet deep, uh, but the width is 80 feet, which is a very nice sized lot for facing yeah. Seventh, so we wouldn't be in a okay. bad position there. So, but we can sure look at that. All right, thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Yeah. Gerald, I just come to come the microphone, know. please. Okay, come to the microphone, please. Okay. Thank you. I'd like to know, with all these background checks, if criminal background checks have, checks have been done. Uh, again, uh, Cheryl, these houses are going to be sold to individual buyers. Uh, the city does not have anything to do with deciding who gets to buy these homes. So you'll need to talk to Mr. Ellis as far as what kind of uh, pre-conditioning uh, he's going to do with the buyers of those homes. That will be out of, that much of it will be out of the city's hands. Okay. okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. Further questions from council? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Getting. Motion to receive. Motion to receive. Where are we at? I think we're Motion to receive and file. Motion to receive, file and consider, and pass for the first time. The ordinance amending ordinance number 5079 as amended, City of Waterloo zoning ordinance by amending the official zoning map referred to in section 10-4-4 approving a site plan amendment on certain property. Second. Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Getty? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Motion carries. The Mayor, I make a motion that we suspend the rules. Second. Madam Clerk? Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Getty? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to consider and pass for the second and third time and adopt the ordinance. Second. Very good. Uh, Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Getty? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Very good. The motion's carried. Thank you, Council. Let's uh, move to resolutions, and I believe we're safe to take three at a time on those first three. Could somebody try that, please? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hart. Move to adopt a resolution approving annual renewal agreement with Safety National Casualty at a cost not to exceed $136,980 per year to provide workers' compensation, stop loss coverage, 
Number five, I move to adopt a resolution approving renewal of general and auto liability for law enforcement, public officials, cyber liability, errors and omissions, and umbrella insurance for a premium of $838,810 with traveler's insurance together with recommendation of approval of insurance committee and rescinding resolution number 2013-549 passed on June 24, 2013. And six, I move to adopt a resolution approving airport management agreement with Trillion Aviation for management consulting in the amount of $6,500 per month plus expenses for six months and authorize mayor to execute same. Second. second. Very good. Motion and second on four, five, and six. Council, do you have any questions or concerns regarding any of those three? Mr. Schmidt. Mr. Mayor, item number six, I don't know where you're at in the time frame of, you know, a replacement for the director, but um, I mean, is it conceivable you'd have that done within six months and will this preclude us or is there a release? Actually, we, that's the, uh, the time frame that we looked at is six months. Mm -hmm. So uh, we think that, yes, could we get out of it earlier than six months? We could, Mr. Schmidt, but I don't think that we're going to have that issue by the time we advertise and interview, get somebody here and get them up to speed. Uh, I think we're going to be looking at that six month period, but yes, we can. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Are there further questions? Uh, Madam Clerk, to roll call vote. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Getty? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Walper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Very good. The motions carry. Thank you very much. Next three, please. Seven, eight, nine. Mr. Mayor? Mr. Uh, Ms. Cole, excuse me. <laughs> okay. Um, seven is a resolution approving school resource officers agreement with Waterloo Community School District for providing the assignment of <coughs> six police officers within the school district for one year and authorize mayor and city clerk to execute. Eight is a resolution approving certificate of completion and final acceptance of work agreement for performed by Veith Construction Corp. of Cedar Falls at a total cost of $1,204,084.32 for the FY 2011 River Renaissance North Downtown Trail Contract Number 786. And nine is a resolution approving notice of intent for the MPDES coverage under general permit to the Iowa DNR in conjunction with the FY 2012 Orange School Sanitary Sewer Extension Contract Number 816 and authorize Mayor to execute said document. Second. Very good. Council, do you have any questions or concerns regarding 7809? <coughs> Madam Clerk, please. I'm sorry? Can I ask a question? Sure, come to the microphone, please. Give us your name and address, please. Bill Kemmeyer, 526 Home Park Boulevard, Waterloo, Iowa. On these six officers, what specifically are they supposed to do within the school district that they're assigned or who assigns them and what's, what's the role that these six police officers are gonna play? Uh, Chief, could you answer that for us, please? Thank you, Mr. Kemmeyer. Dean Trelka, Director of Safety Services. Uh, they are assigned uh, security for the school and investigative for the school uh, to mentor the students, a role model. Uh, many different functions. They are in essence, a, uh, uh, the city is broken into many different wards. That school becomes that officer's ward. Community policing, preventative policing, many, many different roles. I believe, you know, Chief, to expand just a little bit, Bill, and you're aware and familiar with the D.A.R.E. program that was in effect many years ago. When the D.A.R.E. program went away, we just found that there was so much benefit to having police officers in the school that we didn't want to pull the resource officers out of the schools. They, they provide uh, a lot, a lot of tangible, a lot of intangible benefits to the city and to the schools. So uh, we have the partnership with the schools to maintain that program, and I think it's very, a very good program. But they're under your control? They are under my control, yes, sir. Thank you. Further questions? Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Welper. Just curious, any idea how many years we've been doing this? I, my, when my children were young, we were doing it. So. Well, mine too, and that was 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. We've been doing this a long time. Yeah, long time. This is nothing new. Uh, further? Roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Getty? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. 
Very good. Motion carries. Next three, please. 10, 11, and 12. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Schmidt. Item number 10 is adopting a resolution approving supplemental agreement number one with Stanley Consultants, Inc. of Des Moines, Iowa for additional services of groundwater dewatering, dewatering monitoring, data logging, and review for the fiscal year 2013 stormwater pump stations, Verdon Creek, Westfield Avenue, and Vinton Street, contract number 831, and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute said document. Item number 11 is adopting a resolution approving a lease agreement with Wendell Loop Keys in the amount of $200 per year to farm approximately 19 acres of land located near the northwest corner of West 4th Street and West Shawless Road for the purpose of baling hay. And item number 12 is adopting a resolution approving the acquisition contract with Prairie Construction Company, Inc., successor in interest to Jens Olson and Sons Construction Company for the acquisition of parcel number 8913-16-301-001, generally located at the southeast corner of North Hackett Road and Greenwood Avenue in the amount of $35,500 plus up to $1,000 in closing costs, and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute any necessary documents. Second. Council, do you have any questions regarding 10, 11, or 12? It's a roll call vote, please, Madam Clerk. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Getty? Yes. Very good. The motion is carried. <coughs> 13, 14, and 15, please. Mr. Mayor? Mr. Welper? Number 13 is resolution saying the date of hearing is July 15, 2013, to approve a request by Philip Douglas to rezone approximately 1.3 acres of land <coughs> located at the southwest corner of Martin Luther King Drive and Idaho Street from R2, one and two family resident district to CP, plan commercial zoning district for the purpose of constructing a 60 by 120 foot commercial building instruct the city clerk to publish notice. Number 14 is a resolution approving the variance to the requirements of the subdivision ordinance in section 2.31, final uh, plot submittal for crossroads plot number 10. Number 15 is a resolution approving a preliminary and final plot of Crossroads plot number 10, along with the staff report and aerial photo, preliminarily and final plots of deed of dedication, certificate of survey, and report of the city engineer. Second. Very good. Thank you. Mr. Walker. Council, do you have any questions or concerns regarding uh, 13, 14, or 15? Mr. Mayor, could I just ask for a little bit of an overview on item number 13, what that building is going to look oh. like? That's a pretty highly traveled street anymore. Washington Community Planning Development Director. Um, this is, of course, at the, the intersection of MLK and Idaho, the north side of the railroad track, so it's kind of separated from the majority of the development out there. I think there was a small house out there that they demolished. Um, the property owner is looking to build a commercial building. Um, at this point, he's saying it's mainly for his own storage. Um, it definitely could be used for like a mini storage of boats and things like that out there in that area. Um, the Planning Commission did recommend approval of this to CP, which is a planned commercial. So there's some requirements in your council communication about the design criteria of that building, how it's oriented, how it's faced, how it's designed, um, because we did have some concerns for the residential, even with the, with the railroad there. Um, we wanted to make sure that the building looks somewhat nice. Thank you. No, quick question. Um, how much, do we own a lot of property um, off of MLK? We, uh, we do still have some disposal parcels off of MLK um, where there's some irregularities just from the way it was built as a diagonal, so you're buying square parcels when you bought it. Um, we, the, the, probably the largest parcel we own along MLK there as a disposal parcel is at the other corner of this. Um, we, we own over two acres of land at the northeast corner of MLK in Idaho. Okay. I was just wondering, um, like, um, what, what is the vision? Uh, for some parts of that area maybe to take a look at that because you have them building the building to specific specs that you want to see to be compatible with the existing housing but you know what do we really see that area being um, in the future is the, question the future land use map I believe shows the the intersection or proximity area in close proximity to the intersection is uh, commercial Okay. Um, so, you know, there definitely could be a quick star or something at that northeast corner and even at the northwest corner, some kind of a small commercial uses. As you go further up on that 80 acres owned by the Phillips, uh, we definitely would see that as a, as a uh, lower density uh, residential neighborhood. Okay. 
All right, thank you. Further? Madam Clerk, please, it's a roll call vote. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Getty? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do item number 16 by itself. Um, and item 16 is a, a little bit odd, a little bit different than what we're normally used to seeing in resolutions. We actually have uh, two choices there, which uh, uh, the clerk has uh, laid out for us. Um, one uh, would be made for the resolution to approve the City of Waterloo to assume the animal control duties, and the other one would be for the Humane Society to assume the humane, uh, the uh, uh, animal control duties. The reason we have two options there is, is we need to pass one or the other tonight in order to have uh, coverage. So I, I think uh, I, I, with direction from the, the clerk, if I say this wrong, maybe if, if one of you members of council could choose one or the other of them and make a motion, <coughs> And, and that will start us, whether we end up with one or the other. I would be happy to. Ms. Cole? I move that I we approve. I'm sorry. Clarification. So if we, if we vote on one and it fails, do we have to vote on the other one? Uh, I, w I want you to <coughs> vote on the other one tonight. We, we need to have a contract. No, I just mean is it automatically approved for the other one? No, no, no. no, no, no. We have that's to why they're both listed. No, that's, it's, it's not automatic. Mr. Mayor? We tabled the last one, though, so we do need to start with the top. I'm sorry? It hasn't been vetted. Okay. I, okay. My apologies. Since we did table it, we have to take it off the table. Is that correct? Yeah. And vote on it. Okay. Uh, so we need to start with item number 16. Ms. Troll, Mr. Is it Mayor. the first one. Yes, I'm sir. I'm sorry. I thought Mr. Uh, Getty had a question. Yes, sir. Mr. Getty. Under the second, the uh, resolution in the cost of the Humane Society, are those, those the same figures we had last year or this year, or are those the new ones that they proposed? Those are the new figures with the, the, new, the most recent contract, Mr. Gaddy. Let's, let's get a, a motion on the floor here, and then we can have lots of discussion. Mr. Smith. Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry if I could before we get that resolution. So would it be possible for me to offer a third resolution? Uh, not until we untable the first one. Okay. Now let's untable the first one and get that so that we're, we're visiting about this <clears throat> properly. Thank you. Ms. Cole. I move that we adopt a resolution approving the City of Waterloo providing full-time animal control services to Waterloo effective July 1st, 2013. Second. Very good. There's a motion and a second uh, on 16. I'm going to, for sake of clarity, call it 16A. Uh, council, uh, uh, questions, concerns, comments uh, at this point? Wow. Well, uh, okay, if there are none, then we're going to take a vote on 16. Mr. Hey, Mr. Schmidt. Um, I guess I would just like to follow up on uh, some of the questions that were asked last week, and I would assume they would have to do with this resolution rather than the following one. There were some questions uh, asked at the meeting last week about some of our projections, uh, whether or not our, uh, I believe it was a $57,000 salary for an employee whether or not that included uh, benefits package. And I don't remember hearing an answer to that question. Uh, I think there was a question about our proposal is for one van and the uh, Humane Society currently has, I believe it's three. And uh, I think there was a question about how we, uh, you know, intended to, to offset that. And I don't remember hearing an answer to that question. So uh, I guess I'd look for an answer to those two questions. Okay. Sandy, could you take the <coughs> microphone, please? Greco Superintendent of Traffic Operations. Um, yes, the fifty-seven thousand does. Sorry, sorry. Yes, the fifty-seven thousand does include benefits for the full-time officer. Um, we do have. We will step up to. Okay, we will have um, the newer van. We also have an old van for a backup. And what was your other question? I think I think those were the two that I remember from last week. Well, what I asked was I, I believe last week it was stated that. You mean society had three bands and we yes. were proposing to have one. So how are we planning to cover the city with one van, I think was really the question. Well, we'll have one full-time officer during the day. So we only need one van. Okay. So the 57,000 includes benefits. Yes. So the, the actual salary then is like 30 or 35 yes, or something like that. There. Okay. 
or maybe not quite. Right around there, yeah. Further questions? Okay, uh, I, I, I know that there's um, some emotion here tonight, and I know there are people here that would like to speak. Uh, it's not a hearing. Generally, we don't allow comments during hearing or during uh, resolutions, but I will allow tonight uh, some limited comments from the folks that are here. Uh, uh, so, uh, speak last week. yeah, let's, uh, let's uh, come to the microphone, state your name and address, limit your comments to three minutes, and if uh, we're not going to repeat a, a whole lot of stuff here. So uh, we had lots of comments last week. Go ahead, sir. Randy Herod, 111 Highland Boulevard. I'll keep it quite short. Um, there, I've heard a, a, the comment that there hasn't been a lot of interest. I would say that you probably are aware now that there is an awful lot of interest in this throughout the city. And because of that, I would ask that, uh, that the, because the people are interested, they're interested in what you folks think about this, what you have to say about it. And uh, before you vote, I would love to hear, and I think most people would love to hear, your personal opinions about this and whatever issue of it you feel most important. I think that would help a lot of the citizens understand exactly where we're going with this kind of thing. Obviously, I support going with the Humane Society, you know that. But I would like to hear, because last time, there wasn't a lot of comment about what each person thought. And I think it's important that, each <coughs> one, that the citizens understand where each of our council people stand on this issue. Thanks, Mr. Heard. Yes, ma'am, or sir, please, whoever's next. Joe Meyer, 526 Old Park Boulevard, Waterloo, Iowa. Uh, the numbers that I've seen were on a sheet of paper, and it wasn't even close to a business plan. Is there is there a, been a formal business plan by the city for this project? I see that the, the Humane Society has got some pretty good hard, hard numbers down here, and, and uh, this document that I've seen from them, they pretty much spelled it out of how many people and blah, 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 blah. I've not seen anything like that for the city. Have you got something like that for the city that we can see? Yes. Can we see it? it I don't know if it was in the packages or not, but Mr. Kammerer, it, it's been circulated all over the place. We had a work session. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, my name is Cheryl Peters Ramelsburg, and this is the main reason I came here. Okay. Um, I definitely think that it should stay with the hu Cedar Bend Humanity. Humane Society. I have been a lover of dogs and cats all of my life. <clears throat> I've had many dealings with the Humane Society. I've been a pooper scooper. <laughs> I've been a dog walker and my husband and I have donated food. <coughs> um, I'm as concerned as the lady that said she was about the euthanasia. However, that's up to us. If we don't give them enough money, they have to euthanize those dogs. And every time I've dealt with them, they have been polite, they have been um, concerned, um, and they have come out when I called them. Now, several months ago, uh, in front of my house, 934 um, West Mullen and Locust, is where all of the kids get on and off the bus. Okay, there were, this, during this last school year, the elementary kids were coming home. There were two pit bulls out there without tags, without collars, and I called the mayor and I never got an answer back. Now, Mr. Getty called me back. However, I took my Doberman out there and watched those kids so they wouldn't get hurt. I, I don't like it at all. I've called on stray dogs. It doesn't do me any good. Um, I've called on unlicensed dogs. It doesn't do me any good. And, uh, you know, have you heard the saying, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Thank and you, that's Cheryl. the way exactly I feel. And I have a $250 check okay. for somebody from the Humane Society because... That's what we need. 
We need community involvement. And, you know, don't give those pit bulls, uh, you know, that one, those two that kill that poodle and that stroller, they should have been euthanized. They should have been euthanized. That could have been a baby. Okay. And all they got was a $50 fine and they got their frickin' dogs back. And they had no tags on them. Okay. And you, you, you realize that was the Humane Society that handled that case, I think, don't you? Well, it, yeah, maybe in the end, but they okay. followed the rules. Okay. I think, you know, their rules need to be okay. changed. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Appreciate your comments very okay, much. Yes, ma'am. from the Humane Society wants Cheryl? to Cheryl? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, please. Yeah, that's fine. Yes, is there someone else? Jim Chapman, 224 Birch. I'm strictly against Waterloo becoming uh, animal control. I think you're going to start off with one employee, then you're going to be another employee, and another employee, and you're going to see this thing escalate beyond what you're thinking. Thanks, Jim. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Tammy Laughlin. I live at 1463 Oak Crest Drive. And I had to deal with animal control. My dog was lost May 18th. Animal control picked him up, or somebody gave him to him May 20th. I, I was looking for him. And Maria, that runs the animal control that works for him, said that she didn't ever have my dog. And then finally, about a day and a half later, she told me that she did have my dog, but not to worry because she lost him, but she would find him. And that he was in a fenced in area, which is down at the Mitchell Avenue sand pits. Mm -hmm. Well, he's a Shih Tzu Yorkie, so he's a Yorkie poo, and he's only 10 pounds. Mm -hmm. There's quite a space in the fence, of course, he could get out. But he was lost for over a month and a half. I kept calling her. I posted him on Craigslist. She assured me that as soon as she found him, she would be in touch with me, either if dead or alive, because she does all the DOAs. She never contacted me. I kept reposting on Craigslist. Of girl finally got a hold of me and said that she thought my dog was on pet finder and he was it was my dog he was in jewel iowa he had a pet rescue uh black hawk county animal control had taken a few dogs there um so maria didn't follow through with what she told me okay my dog could have been easily adopted out i consider my dog part of my family so i had to pay 450 dollars to get him back i just got him back last wednesday it was a pretty difficult time, a whole month and a half searching for him. I never gave up, and thank God somebody was paying attention. And he's in pretty bad shape, but he's getting better. I did go to Sandy Gecko and, and uh, file a complaint or whatever <coughs> about Maria because I didn't appreciate being lied to. And Maria also told me that that wasn't policy that Waterloo take dogs to Jewel, Iowa. But Jewel, Iowa did tell me that they had taken a few dogs. Mm -hmm. So I just want a city to be aware of what's going on and the problems that you could be facing. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, glad you got your dog back. Yeah, me too. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Jennifer Kane from War uh, 411 Glencoe Avenue, Waterloo, Iowa. I spoke last week. Um, I came up with a better list of questions. I'm not here to attack anybody. I just have a lot of questions that I feel I need answered. And as a taxpayer, I think everyone who has concerns about this need to have answered. Um, there was mentioned that there was a volunteer list. I'm curious as to how many volunteers are on that list since we will be... Mayor, we can't hear her. Here, where we Sorry. That if there is a volunteer list, I'm curious how many people are actually on that and what kind of pool you're pulling from for those individuals. Um, if they're going to be using community service people, are those people going to be uh, supervised the entire time that they're there? Um, who are you outsource strays to if you're not able to, since CBHS won't? Um, new ordinances of current, you know, if they're going to remain current or if they're going to be updated, revised. Where will those lists be readily accessible by all people who live in Waterloo? Um, there was a question last week about the dead animal pickup and the euthanized animals. You were not clear, in fact, very vague about where those animals would be disposed of. There are certain laws as far as that's concerned. Um, 
I would like to know where they're going to do dis be disposed and how, because mm -hmm. it's against the law for them to go directly into a landfill. Mm -hmm. um, and in reference to the budget, if you're unable to meet the budget this year, will you be going back to Cedar Bend if they're willing to make a contract with you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, you ask a lot of a lot of questions, a lot of good questions, and, and we're not. I'm not going to try to. I put a lot of thought into them. You know, they're yeah. not random. <laughs> I'm not going to answer all of them tonight, but uh, yeah. you know, depending on how this goes tonight, uh, Sandy can answer all of those questions for you, and we'd be glad to, as as any questions that are asked asked by anyone. So we will okay. get those for well, you. Thank, thank you, you. Mr. Mayor. You bet. Council. Anyone else? Hi, my name is Beverly Frost, 718 Wisconsin. Um, I would hope that the council members would take a really good look at what the work sessions have brought out. I think Maria, Sandy Greco have done a fabulous job in what they have done. So. I just hope you really take a good hard look. I do believe there is cost savings. Maria has proved it. I think Sandy can prove it. And I have volunteered many, many hours for the city of Waterloo in regards to this. And I'm not going to stop volunteering. Thank you. Thanks, Ms. Frost. Yes, sir. Forest Dillaboo, 1725 Huntington Road. The cost savings that you were talking were not real big dollars the first year. And uh, those would be far offset by what you're going to spend on the building and the cages and, the, and all of the things that it takes to go in business. At $57,000 per employee, if you make a little slip and you need two employees, there's $57,000. The $20,000 is gone. And as, as I mentioned last week, we are renting a building, similar building, for our Parks Department equipment to take care of downtown Waterloo. We're paying $12,000 a year. If we retained the Humane Society and rented this building for $12,000 a year, we could more than offset that savings. We wouldn't have the burden of another employee. We wouldn't come to next year at budget time and say, it's employees, folks. Who are we going to get rid of? Which policeman, which fireman do you want to give up? That's the thing you tell us every year. Today, I moved the last of my children out of Waterloo. They have all relocated. Taxes, high cost of living, fees are driving many people from their homes here. If you create another department, it will probably be like the last one Mayor Roof created. He hired one person. Then we hired more people. And this year we added another person. Because you find a need, they find a need. Build their own empire, whatever you want to call it. I am getting tired of the taxes and my children have given up on Waterloo. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Uh, Council, do you have any further questions before we vote on the motion that's on the floor? There's a motion and a second on item number 16A, which is uh, to for the city to provide full-time animal control services. It's a roll call vote. Mr. Mr. Mayor, I would just like to mention, uh, just for the record, my friendly third uh, alternative resolution. Basically what it would be is the second resolution uh, approving the agreement with the Cedar Bend Humane Society, but with the caveat that we would sign that for ideally six months or a year as long as we have the, the 60 day uh, opt out. I have talked to members of the Cedar Falls City Council, the Blackhawk County Board of Supervisors, and it seems to me this is one of those opportunities again for that collaborative effort that we all talk about that us City of Waterloo, the, the other cities and uh, towns in Blackhawk County, the county, Hawkeye Community College has an animal uh, mm -hmm. program, and, and obviously the Humane Society, I think, needs to be part of this conversation too. And I think this is a, you know, a big picture, long-term issue that we should sit down and, and spend the time. I know you've mentioned there have been a lot of meetings, but I don't necessarily think we've had everybody at those meetings that we may should have, and, uh, and so that for what it's worth, that would be my recommendation. So I'm going to vote against this motion. Okay. Uh, <coughs> let's see who's going to vote. Madam Clerk, to roll call vote, please. Mr. Schmidt? No. Mr. Wilper? Yes. 
Mr. Hart? No. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Getty? Yes. Mr. Jones? No. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Very good. It, uh, the motion passes four to three uh, for the city of Waterloo to take over full-time animal control. Passes four to three. So this motion is over. Uh, we will move on to item number 17, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hart. I move to adopt a resolution resetting date of hearing as July 8, 2013 to approve request of Primary LLC to vacate a portion of an existing 16-foot sanitary sewer easement on the property generally bounded by Crossroads Boulevard, Bob Street, and LaPorte Road for the purpose of relocating the sanitary sewer line for commercial development purposes, subject to the approval becoming effective upon the completion and acceptance of the new sanitary sewer line and instruct city clerk to publish notice. Can we get a second? second? Very good. Uh, motion and second on item 17. Council, do you have any questions regarding that item? Item 17. It's a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Wilbur? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Getty? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Very good. Motion to carry. Item number 18, please. Mr. Mayor? Uh, Mr. Hart. I'm Sorry, moved. Harold, I heard him first. Well, he can Mr. second. Hart. Mr. Hart. <laughs> Move to instruct Director of Safety Services to prepare specifications, bid documents, et cetera, for the fall year 2014 ammunition needs for a police department. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I move to receive and file specifications, bid documents, etc. Second. Council, do you have any questions or concerns regarding 18? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt a resolution preliminarily approving specifications, bid documents, etc. Second. Very good. It's a roll call vote. Madam Clerk. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Getty? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welfer? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt a resolution setting date of hearing <coughs> and bid opening as July 8, 2013, and instruct city clerk to publish notice of specifications, bid documents, etc., and taking of bids. Second. Very good. It's a roll call vote, please, Madam Clerk. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Getty? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Wilbur? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Motion carries. Let's do item 19 and 20, please. Mr. Mayor? Mr. Getty, you want to take that one? Uh, Mr. Greenwood. Sorry. I bet Bob Mr. Greenwood would love to. Number 19, the motion approving change order number 3 for a net decrease of $8,023.90. For work performed by PCI of Rhinebeck, Iowa for fiscal year 2009 West Chalice Road, contract number 759. And 20 is a motion approving change order number 10 for net increase of $15,668.04 for work performed by Veith Construction Corporation of Cedar Falls, Iowa for fiscal year 2011 River Renaissance North Downtown Trail, contract number 786. Second. Very good. Uh, questions or comments, Council, on 19 or 20? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of our regularly scheduled meeting tonight. I thank you for the participation, for those of you who are still here. Uh, uh, good comments and, and good discussion tonight. It's time for oral presentations. If anyone would like to step to the microphone, give us your name and address, and limit your comments to three minutes, please. Uh, Mr. Mayor. City Council, department heads and staff, uh, I'm Rick Morris. I'm one of the uh, partners over at the Beecher Law Firm. We're the owner of the property known as the Court Square Building. In the fall of 2011, we embarked on a remodeling and reconstruction project over there that we finished in March or April of 2012. We submitted all the information to the city to get a city development agreement. We've received nothing, and so I'm here tonight to ask when we will get that agreement and at what point will we get our taxes back that we will start paying that should have been affected by that agreement had it been approved a year ago? No. Noel Anderson, Community Planning Development Director. We're, we're trying to work with the assessor's office to figure up the back tax part of that um, for the development agreement, so we hopefully get that to them within uh, the next two weeks. Within the next two weeks? Yes. So uh, this week is Monday, so not this week, but next week. Okay. So by July 15th, we'll have an agreement? Yes. Thank you. Very good. Thanks, Mr. Morris. Anyone else? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hart. Make a motion to receive and file oral comments and adjourn. 
I'm happy Second. for it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We're adjourned. Thank you, Council.